What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about the Gecko Trading Bot and how to query Telegram for portfolio balance. So essentially, what we're doing here is this. So I'm going to Telegram right here, and when I type in slash status, it'll tell me exactly, and it responds right away, exactly what the current price is, what the RSI is, because I'm using RSI strategy. But then, um, that's not the important part. The important part is the portfolio that you see underneath. It shows me what I have in my entire portfolio for um, Coinbase Pro. So how can you have it set up so that Telegram sends you this information? I'll show you that right now. So here are the steps that you have to take to make this work. So the first thing is have remote control with Telegram mod installed. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should definitely go back to watch this video right here. Gecko Trading Bot Remote Control Your Gecko via Telegram. So this is the instruction that I have in this video. It should help you set up Gecko Telegram to the point where you can remotely control it. And that's what you need, the first and foremost. And this video is links to my GitHub repo right here with individual steps as well on how to set it up. So, I mean, you can just follow the steps here as well. I think the video is probably a little bit better just to give you a, a full idea so but if you don't need the video you can just follow the steps here but the whole point is you do have to have this installed in order to control gecko remotely so after you have that done the next step is to modify the config file to store an array of values within the repo that i have set up right here so there is a file i mean the config file config dash paper trader i just gave you guys a config file here it actually already have this information so if you look into it it has part of it. Let's go all the way to the bottom right here. So I modified the config file. But what I did in the config file was I actually created a whole section called temporary storage. Essentially what it does is it pull in the information from the strategy and then store it in, in this location right here so that you can you can use it to reference it at, at other places. That was the whole idea. So originally I was only going to be for indicators. So, but then what I end up doing is you do have to modify this. I'm just going to show you what I modify here. It's really quite simple, actually. Within the temporary storage section, all I added was this thing called portfolio. So the two brackets right here indicate that this is an array. It's an empty array right now because we're not storing anything in here. This is just to basically a, a placeholder for you to actually store stuff. It doesn't have anything inside yet. So the point is you want to have this place available for the next step. So let's go on to the next step right here. So the next step is to modify gdax.js or whatever exchange you use to store the portfolio information in the config file whenever it query it. So essentially what we're doing here is this. Inside gdax.js, again, if you use Binance or if you use the stamp or whatever exchange you use, you will have to go into that exchange JS file. And then within that file, there is a function called get portfolio. Inside this function, it'll create a variable called portfolio and then it will map all the information from your account into this portfolio variable. So the portfolio variable is basically, a, it's gonna store the name and the amount for each of the currency that's available from your exchange. And this gets sent back to whatever function I called it via the callback. But in here, after the callback function, I actually store this portfolio inside my config file by going to config.currentindicator.portfolio. So one other thing, I have to mention, if you just type this in right now, this particular line, if you just copy it and type it in, whatever you do, it will fail because you actually have to give GDAX or whatever exchange you're using access to your config file. So in here, that's what I did. So it's like var config equal to require, and then I'll tell exactly where the config file is. And then I'll be able to access the config file and store the portfolio information in the config file. So after that, you just have to modify your strategy to send portfolio info upon request. So this is uh, where the most of the legwork is actually. So if you go back to the strategy as core my RSI in this case, so there's a couple of things you have to do. Obviously in the on command, in the status section here, let's go over this one first. So in here, you do have to modify the status command to actually to provide all this information so that it will actually provide a price, RSI, RSI history. Obviously, you don't need any of those stuff. The main important thing is the portfolio. And the portfolio is, again, it's an array of struct. So you will want to go through the entire portfolio, the entire array. And what I did was I just wrote a for loop. I equals zero to I equals to the length of the array, so the last element in the array. 
and then it just do I plus plus. So it cycles through this portfolio, and then every time it cycles through, it'll append this information. It'll append the name and the portfolio balance onto the command that response message. So that when it's done, what happens is you will have every single one of your fiat or crypto balance on this message. So basically, as you saw in here, where it lists the USD, ETH, BTC, LTC, this is Coinbase Pro. So that's all the stuff it has. Yours might differ slightly if you have a Euro or you have other fiat currency in here. So that's pretty much it. I, if I've forgotten something, definitely let me know. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is the entire process of setting up a telegram to show your portfolio balance. So what's the benefit of showing the portfolio in Gecko? I mean, what's the benefit of showing your portfolio? I mean, for one thing, you can. I just like the fact that I can query it and to make sure that the bot is still working because um, obviously there's a chance when the bot can crash for various purposes. I mean, lately I have seen the bot crash because it's querying the public API for GDAX too much, and then it's just been crashing out. I just set the delay a little bit higher to make sure that it doesn't crash, but there could be other reasons why the bot can crash, and you definitely want to be able to see that like just by checking the status and seeing it. I know another complaint that people have about Gecko is that sometimes it has a leftover balance. So with this, you can check whether or not it's actually leaving a leftover balance. So then you're like, okay, you know, see how much it is, and then there are ways to fix that too. I'll probably explain that in a future video. But right now, that's my video for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out.